IDW Publishing began producing Transformers comic books in 2005, introducing a brand new continuity that reinvented the world of the Autobots and Decepticons from the ground up. But after six years, the company massively changed the landscape of this new universe with one question. What happens to the Transformers after their war ends? In 2012, two new ongoing monthly comics were launched that explored the answer, ushering in a new era of critical success and new readership that would come to be referred to as Phase 2 of the IDW universe. Those comics were more than meets the eye, and the series we're looking at in today's episode. Sponsored by Patreon supporter Jolene Blake, these are the basics on IDW's Robots in Disguise. Launched in January 2012, The Transformers Robots in Disguise was written by John Barber, who had recently made a name for himself on IDW's tie-in comics for the live-action movie Dark of the Moon. Art for the series was provided by Andrew Griffith, with colours by Josh Perez, and featured character designs adapted from the recent War for Cybertron video game. As the series began, the Transformers War had finally ended, and the Autobots and Decepticons now coexisted in an uneasy peace with the rest of Cybertron's unaffiliated civilian population. Megatron had disappeared, and Optimus Prime, knowing that the people considered him just as responsible for the war, had stepped down as Autobot leader, leaving Bumblebee with the job of trying to establish a new government on the planet. In addition to B, major characters in this opening story arc included civilian representative Metalhawk, Starscream, seeking to acquire a position of power in the new government, Wheeljack and Ironhide, each dedicated to making the peace work in their own way, and the scheming Prowl, who didn't share his comrade's optimism and took more cloak and dagger means of preserving the peace with the help of his secret ally, R.C. Unfortunately, a group of dissident Decepticons were able to place Prowl under mind control and fused him with the Constructicons to create a new, more powerful version of the Combiner, Devastator, to serve as the ultimate weapon in the returned Megatron's new plan to take over the planet. The Autobots were able to rescue Prowl and defeat Megatron, but Starscream was able to exploit the disaster to get the people to elect him the new leader of Cybertron. A subplot that ran throughout this first arc followed Optimus Prime as he travelled the galaxy, discovering evidence that Decepticon scientist Shockwave had a plan of his own in motion. This led into 2013's Dark Cybertron. A crossover with More Than Meets the Eye, produced as a tie-in to be packaged with figures in the Transformers Generations toy line. The story brought the comic's second year to a close as the heroes of both titles reunited to stop Shockwave from collapsing the universe into a black hole. In 2014, the comic's action moved from Cybertron to Earth and the series dropped its subtitle to become known simply as The Transformers, in order to avoid confusion with the upcoming new toy line and cartoon also called Robots in Disguise. This year saw Optimus Prime return to the fore, as he and a small team of Autobots searched Earth for the Enigma of Combination, an ancient artifact belonging to the original 13 Primes from Cybertronian legend with the power to create Combiners. Also searching for the Enigma were a team of Decepticons led by Galvatron, who had duped Earth's anti-alien task force, the Earth Defense Command, into allying with them against the Autobots. Starscream's rule of Cybertron, meanwhile, was explored in the new series, Windblade, but the two plotlines would collide again in a second toyline tie-in crossover event, 2015's Combiner Wars, in which the power of the Enigma was unleashed when the increasingly unstable Prowl tried to stop Starscream from re-establishing contact with long-lost Cybertronian colonies on other planets. 
Prowl failed, but the inhabitants of these colonies turned out to worship Primes as divine beings. So to keep Starscream's ambitions in check, Optimus reluctantly leveraged the colonists' belief in him to influence their decisions, in order to build a better, united future for all the planets together. But Prime would wind up taking this new authority to a drastic extreme in the climactic 2016 story arc All Hail Optimus, when Galvatron launched an invasion of Earth and Optimus took it upon himself to annex the planet into the Cybertronian Empire for its own protection. And so was posed the question that would shape Barber's stories going forward. Despite the good intentions with which he'd acted, did the power and influence he wielded as a prime mean that Optimus was fated to inevitably succumb to the same legacy of imperialism and corruption? as all those who had carried the title before him. Additions to the cast during this second act of the series included Autobots Cup, Jazz, Jetfire, Sideswipe and Cosmos, Soundwave, who eventually abandoned Galvatron and began working with Optimus to build a better future for the Decepticons, Thundercracker, who had left Cybertron behind to pursue a new life as a filmmaker on Earth, and his human friend, EDC Commander Marissa Fairborn. Also introduced was the notable original character Aileron, an idealistic young bot from the colony planet Caminus, who became sorely disillusioned after she was confronted by the grimy reality of Cybertronian life and politics. But probably the most significant character in Barber's run next to Optimus himself was R.C., Controversially introduced in early IDW stories as the deranged victim of a forced sex reassignment, she was rehabilitated and reinvented by Barber as an isolated bot searching for a way to emotionally connect with others outside of combat. The Transformers concluded with a short third toyline tie-in event, Titan's Return wrapping up in September 2016 with its 57th issue. A few months later, in December, it was relaunched as a new series titled Optimus Prime, with Barber still at the helm, now joined by new artist Kay Zama and colorist Josh Burcham. This series dealt with the fallout of Optimus's decision, as he attempted to build a working relationship between a Cybertron displeased by his unsanctioned unilateral action and an Earth that had never asked to be part of the Transformers world. Exploring themes such as the ramifications of colonialism, the challenge of balancing societal unity with individual freedom, and the power of stories to shape the world, the series saw Prime alienate those around him as he was forced to make increasingly questionable and manipulative moves, his greatest critics being Pyra Magna, leader of the Torchbearers from Caminus, and Slide, a resentful colonist from the planet Division, who both rejected belief in Prime's divinity. And over it all loomed the threat of Onyx Prime, one of the long-vanished original Thirteen, who it was hinted would soon return to Cybertron. Over the years, Barber's run was supplemented by several essential miniseries, including the Redemption of the Dinobots trilogy and key crossovers with other Hasbro properties like Revolution, Revolutionaries, ROM vs Transformers, and First Strike. Seeds laid across all these different stories came together for the final act of Optimus Prime in 2018, when it transpired that the return of Onyx Prime was a hoax perpetrated by Shockwave, as part of a new plan to awaken the monster planet Unicron, a doomsday weapon created by an alien race the original Primes had wiped out in their crusade to colonize other worlds. Everything culminated in the six-issue Unicron miniseries, which brought Barber's seven-year saga and the entire IDW Transformers universe to an end, as Optimus, last of the Primes, gave up his life to confront and destroy the embodiment of his predecessor's legacy, and with his sacrifice, opened the way to a new, united future for the Transformers and humankind.
Though somewhat eclipsed by the mainstream critical praise more than meets the eye received, John Barber's run was just as essential to the identity of Phase 2. In many ways it was the main Transformers comic, its story defining the shape and direction of the IDW universe over seven years. This did mean that the story and its cast were more prone to abrupt changes due to toyline tie-ins, but Barber had a talent for incorporating Hasbro's demands into his ongoing narrative. In particular, he became famous for his eye for continuity, always building on the work of writers who had come before him, revisiting years-old plot threads and intricately weaving new ideas out of them, and reimagining multiple characters into what would become fan-favourite incarnations. Robots in Disguise ran for 57 issues and was collected in 10 trade paperback volumes, while Optimus Prime ran for 25 issues, collected in 5 volumes, with additional collections for the various crossovers and tie-in miniseries. But with the news that IDW will be losing the Transformers license in 2023, these collections will soon become unavailable. So if this episode has made you curious, be sure not to miss your chance to read the series that deconstructed the very idea of what it means to be Optimus Prime. And those are the basics on IDW's Robots in Disguise. Thanks to Jolene for sponsoring this episode about one of her and my favourite Transformers comics. Share some of your favourite stories, characters and moments from this series in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe and support the show on Patreon for more from the world of the Transformers.